If you're new to the channel or you've been watching for some time and you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing as it'll only take a little bit of your time and it honestly makes a massive difference. My first ever experience with anime was Dragon Ball. Then eventually it was Naruto, then Magi, then Seven Deadly Sins. Where I'm going with this is my perspective about anime was just like most people who are new to anime. It's supernatural, out of this world, exaggerated screaming and super colorful, and then I eventually got into seinen manga. Now, the more you read, the more you find out that the lines between seinen and shonen are pretty much non-existent, and it's only really what magazine something is published in. But my first seinen manga was actually Berserk, this brutal graphic dark fantasy adventure epic. And then, eventually, I went on to read Monster. Uh, again, with everything that I knew previous about anime, my impression was that it was over the top, loud, but also beautiful and majestic, and reading Berserk really opened my eyes to appreciating the quieter moments with characters. But the realism and the legitimate sense that I was reading something that could be played out like a live action was so different and immersive for me at the time. This wasn't a story that had aliens, it wasn't... Well, you get the point. So, in this video, I finally wanted to take time addressing the overall beauty of the story of Monster, outside of just its main antagonist, Johan, who I've praised on many, many occasions. First, I want to give a thanks to today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals is a free browser extension. Just go to the link down below and download the browser extension, and you're pretty much good to go. It offers you the best prices when you go shopping online, and if you use the browser extension, you will automatically see the best discount prices prices of some of your favorite online retailers. And you don't even need to search for any coupons as it will automatically apply the latest coupon codes to save you the most money whenever you purchase or well just check out online. And with a community of over 12 million users, they share the most up-to-date information so you can make sure you get the best deal possible whenever you purchase anything on the internet. And it's also one of the largest shopping destinations with over a billion visits annually. So make sure you go down to the description below and download the free browser extension for slick deals, a better way to purchase on the internet. My motivation for wanting to do this video is... You should motivate yourself now. is I've been feeling extremely burnt out, constantly having to read new things, and I decided it'd be nice to take some time to slow down and enjoy some of the things that I've previously read, as I think it's interesting how we a lot of us in the anime community, me included, will read something once and then that'll be it. That's the end all be all of our opinion on that series. And I always think going back and revisiting one every now and then is a really good idea because you catch all of these things that you may have missed when you read it years ago. Recently rereading Vagabond, I felt passionate about the series again and I wanted to do a video on it, which by the way, that video did really well, so thank you for that. But when I went back to visit Monster, I wonder if it would still hold up like it did for me two years ago. Now having read so many more stories that were just thriving and dripping and just realism and that sense of immersiveness, uh, stories like Innocent for example. And uh, even though I think Innocent has a lot more realism in terms of its art style, in terms of actual story and characters, Monster still holds up beautifully. It's like an amazing movie you never get tired of seeing over and over and over again. One of the main reasons for that is the dialogue in Monster, something that I've garnered a much larger appreciation for now starting to work on my own story, which has been a very long process, which I'll talk about more on a later occasion. But the dialogue in Monster is brilliant. There's a rhythm to it just like you would expect in a Tarantino film. Just this amazing back and forth of attack and defend. As even though it's a story that's very realistic, dialogue should not always be realistic, as we as people always take forever to get to the point. Uh, have a look. Uh, let me know, I'll, I'll swap them out. Uh, you know, you can just like go ahead and knock on my skull if, if you need But if not, the dialogue is believable for every character in the story of Monster. As well as Urasawa is just an absolute genius and fully understands the concept of subtext and applies it gracefully. The ability to have a character say something with having very heavy undertones and implications under what they're directly saying to the other character in the scene. Uh, this is something that's very important and I think adds a lot to Monster, as I think if the 
dialogue was constantly on the nose, it wouldn't be as believable and it would take away from the very intense moments when characters are on the nose, like with Johan's iconic death quote. But this video isn't about dialogue. However, I would encourage you that if you ever reread Monster, really pay attention to the way Urasawa does things with this. But what is Monster about? What's the message that we can take away from reading the story outside of its amazing plot? And I think it's in the title monster. But to further explain that, we need to look at the two primary characters of our story and then go into the other characters, uh, Tenma and Johan, the protagonist and antagonist of our story. I kind of want to make this a little clear because I have praised Johan heavily on many occasions, uh, rightfully so, but this story is not about Johan. This story is about how Tenma deals with a person like Johan. One of the great things that I've been learning when it comes to story writing is your antagonist should be tailor-made to conflict, to push, and to contrast your protagonist. Your antagonist needs to push your protagonist into making choices, choices that could sacrifice their moral code. Uh, a very similar example to this would be The Dark Knight, as I think The Dark Knight is an amazing film, and a lot of people praise Heath Ledger's Joker, but I think in praising that character so heavily, people seem to undermine or kind of forget how brilliant the protagonist of the movie is, uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman, played by Christian Bale. And I think a similar thing happens here with Monster, as Tenma, whilst although I do see gets praise, it's not nearly to the extent of a character as Johan who simply just serves a different role than him. But everything that happens in the story, the message that we are to take from it is from Tenma's perspective, and Johan simply exists to push Tenma's beliefs and his morality. The message being that all human life has value, all human life is equal. It is the value of human life and how we value other people. It's something that's made very clear from the beginning of the story and we simply see how he grows in that conviction as the story goes on. Johan simply serves as the clear-cut contrast to that. And what makes Johan such a fascinating character is as we learn through his backstory and what happened in 511, we get to learn the events that made the monster that is Johan, uh, somebody who suffered unfortunate circumstances, but then we see another character like Grimmer who turned out a lot better than Johan. And I think that's one of the things that's really brilliant about Monster is outside of the main two, it also has some choice characters that really do stand out and push the themes of the the story further, as one doesn't need to be this mass murdering psychopath in order to lose one's humanity and value for other people. I think the character Detective Lunge is the perfect example of this, someone who's so obsessed with his work he's become negligent of his own wife and daughter. And there's a specific scene where Lunge walks into the office and the person in charge of him tells him he has nothing. Now again, I don't think the person in charge of him knew of what was going on in Lunge's personal life, he was simply talking about the the cases that he had. Yet in the context of the grander scheme, Lunge finding out that his wife and daughter were leaving him, that quote of you have nothing means so much more. Again, Urasawa using dialogue brilliantly. There's also a scene earlier on within the story where Tenma saves a terrorist, and uh, Tenma at first refuses to save his life until the man explains himself and gives off this emotional outcry in what seems to be his final words, and Tenma then decides to save him. And when the terrorist asks why, Tenma said, it's because I felt you were human. The story of Monster is about the beauty of humanity and the value that we should see in other people. And I know this is an anime and manga channel, so this might not be a popular thing to say, but we as people are social beings. Uh, we thrive off of our relationships with other people. Also, that's not to say that we don't like to have moments of intimacy and being alone, some more than others. I'm a bit introverted myself, so I understand. But it's not healthy to just be in pure isolation on our own without any sort of other human interaction in our life. And the more we lose that value in other people and the value of our own humanity, the less we become human, the more we become a monster, which is what Johan purely embodies and why a character character like Grimmer is so important is because despite whatever evils he has faced, he's always smiling and he always moves forward gracefully. And that's what makes his character so special is the direct contrast he serves to Johan 
just like Tenma does. Although Grimmer is more so in outcome and the decision and how to live one's life, Tenma being more of the philosophical counter, but you know. The cast of characters Monster has and the way that it's able to use each character to either tie in to the plot or to the theme of the story is beautiful. Uh, just like with the man and the little girl uh, early on within the story, of course Tenma, Johan, the Magnificent Steiner himself, Lunge, and even characters like Nina and Ava. Look, I think we can all agree Ava is a massive bitch, but uh, I do think her character is important, and upon rereading it, I did garner more of an appreciation. As I said, there's more than just being a, a, a mass murdering psychopath like Johan in order to lose touch with one's humanity. Lunge's obsession with his work and negligence of his family, and then Ava not understanding the real value in other people, simply using them for position, status, and pleasure, and that leading to a life of misery for her. I think I've made my point relatively clear now with all the different examples of the characters, but on top of this super intense murder mystery crime chase plot, it's this theme and message that's beautifully shining through the entire time. And it shines through even greater when we finally take a look at the contrast, Johan. Johan's a bit of a tragic character when you look at him. The suffering and the pain that he went through as a child made him the person that he is. And Johan is even more interesting because it's really his morality. And when you put it up in question, Johan, from his perspective, the pure nihilist that he is, if there truly is no value in other people and other humans, then what's the point in morality? If people are worth nothing, then what does it matter if he manipulates someone to kill someone else, or if he takes a human life? Being completely desensitized to the idea of killing another person, the absolute loss of value and appreciation for other people, and even though this isn't to the most extreme uh, example, I, I do notice that it seems like with some people in real life, they value their pet more than another human being. And in no way, shape, or form am I saying you're like, yo, Hunter, I relax. I'm just, again, speaking to the loss of value when it comes to human life. But I think from Johan's perspective, it's interesting how people draw certain moral lines and boundaries, but if human life has no value and no meaning and no equality outside of death, then why do we draw those moral lines in the first place? And Tenma stands there triumphantly and firm that value does exist within people. It's our humanity. It's our love and appreciation for other people. It's the ability to strive and move forward despite the difficulties that we face in life. The ability to redeem ourselves from the dark pasts and our dark mistakes that makes us human and is the beauty in us as people regardless of all the flaws and evils that we do inherently bring. We see this with the growth and the development of Detective Lunge and Ava. We see this with the conviction that Tenma goes through despite all of the adversity that he faces. And we see this with the tragedy of Johan, a boy who did not grow up to be a human being or a man, but instead grew up to be a monster.